so we're continuing on with our discussion of inventory valuation and in this uh, video we're going to be talking about the weighted average cost method sometimes called the moving cost method so we're going to jump right in with an example here I've got a spreadsheet set up for us and again this is called the weighted average or the average cost method because in each each time we make a purchase we're going to need to calculate a new average cost for what we have in ending inventory. So we can see that with this spreadsheet here. So again, this is the same spreadsheet we've been using for FIFO and LIFO in previous videos. So on July the 1st, we had beginning inventory of one item that cost us $40. Well, the average cost of that one item is would be $40. <clears throat> on July the 5th, we purchased six more items. Again, costs are rising, so $45 each for a total cost of $270. So if you scroll on over now on July the 5th to our ending inventory, we now have seven items from one from our beginning and six with the purchase. That cost us a total of $310. That's $40 for the one item from beginning and $270 for the six we just purchased. So the way we would get an average cost of each one of those items in our ending inventory is to take the total cost we currently have in ending inventory of $310, divide that by seven items, and that gives us a weighted average cost of $44.29. So now when we go and sell those or sell some of those items on July the 15th, we're going to sell four items. We're going to cost them at that average cost of $44.29 for a total of $177. That's what we will record as our cost of goods sold in our journal entry. And now we have three items left in ending inventory at that $44.29 for a total of $133. Notice I didn't calculate a new average. There's no need to when I make a sale. Only when we make a purchase do we need to recalculate a new average cost. <clears throat> So then on July the 26th, we purchased seven more items. Again, costs are rising, so they're $50 a piece now for a total of $350. Well, we had three items, and now we've added seven more, so we've got a total of 10 items that cost us a total of $483. That's $133 from the three items previously. Then we added seven items at $50 at $350, so $483. To get an average cost of each one of those units, we're going to take $483, divide that by our 10 units. We get an average cost of $48.30. Then we make another sale on the 31st of eight items, and we're going to use our aver current average cost of $48.30 to cost those items. Remember, this does not reflect revenues. This is only cost in this chart. So the cost of that sale would be $386.00. That leaves us two items in ending inventory at $48.30 each for a total of $97 in our ending inventory. Total cost of goods sold for this period, we sold 12 items at $563 and our total purchases of 13 items $620. So keep this in mind, if you're doing all three methods, the FIFO, LIFO, and weighted average methods, uh, LIFO is going to give you the greatest cost of goods sold, and we discussed why that is in a previous video about LIFO. FIFO will give you the uh, least cost of goods sold, and your weighted average method should be somewhere right in between those two. So now I want you to try an example. Prepare Gutter's Paradise Inventory Record, so similar to what we just, the little spreadsheet we just set up, on an average cost basis. Round your average cost per unit to the nearest cent so two decimal places, and all other amounts to the nearest dollar. Then identify the cost of ending inventory and cost of goods sold for the month. The sales price of each item is $140 and all sales are on account. Now we're setting up an inventory cost sheet. So the sales price, our sales revenue, is really not important in this story here. When this becomes important is when we're calculating our gross profit or journalizing our entries, then we would need to know what we actually sold these things for. But if we're simply cal calculating cost of goods sold and ending inventory, we do not really need sales revenue. So that's not there to trick you, but you should know that it, it's not needed in calculating cost of goods sold and your ending inventory. So press pause in your player. Figure out the cost of your ending inventory and your cost of goods sold and your purchases in that little spreadsheet that we've been looking at and come back and we'll talk about it together. 
Okay, so what you should have found, you should have found an ending inventory of six items at $480. Cost of goods sold, you sold eight items at a total of $630. And your purchases, you purchased 10 items at $810. Don't forget, if you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up, and questions and comments are always welcome.